This is a talking book, but it's nothing like the talking books we're familiar with in this age of streaming, downloads and podcasts. For a start, the audio is recorded on two sides of a 78 RPM record. Secondly, it comes with an illustrated hardback book. It is also quite rare. I've only ever seen two copies in years of collecting. But what is of special interest to me is the narrator is a man whose voice was very familiar on BBC Radio during the 1940s and 1950s. Along with John Snagg and Alvar Liddell, Frank Phillips was one of the voices of authority on the BBC's wartime broadcasts. Scientists, British and American, have made the atomic bomb at last. The voice of radio announcer Frank Phillips, who was the first BBC newsreader to set the trend of starting each news bulletin by announcing his name. In 1948, he left his radio studio to record a gramophone record for an independent production company. He recorded a nativity story for children, written by Minnie Lake. Talking books actually date back to the mid-1930s, but this publication was the very first festive interactive talking book. When it was published in 1948, the cost was 12 shillings and sixpence, which would have made it quite an expensive book as a gift for children back in the austerity of the post-war period. 12 and 6 is the equivalent of about £23 today. Illustrations in the book are by John Mansbridge. He'd been a war artist for the Air Ministry during the Second World War. To help a child read along with the narration, a chime is heard whenever the page should be turned. It sounds something like this. This is played over the musical accompaniment composed by Leslie Bridgewater. The chime can sound a little discordant when the keys fail to match. See what you think as we pop the record on the turntable and listen to the story of the first Christmas morning. A little boy was being put to bed by his mother on Christmas Eve, and as she tucked him up, he asked her, Mummy, tell me about the very first Christmas morning when Jesus was born. And this is the story she told him. There was once a very good man named Joseph, who lived in Nazareth with his young wife Mary, who was sweet and gentle. Now Mary was going to have a baby son, she knew this because the angel Gabriel had appeared to her and said, Fear not, Mary, thou shalt have a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary told Joseph, and they were very happy. Now this was in the days of King Herod of Judea, and just at that time, great Caesar Augustus issued a decree that everybody should be taxed. Joseph was of the city of David called Bethlehem, and he had to journey there to pay his taxes. So he set off one day with Mary. One evening, as they drew near to Bethlehem, Mary grew very tired and said that she would like to rest. So Joseph sought lodging at an inn on the outskirts of the town. The innkeeper said he had no lodging to offer them. From inside the inn came the sound of loud laughter and dancing and music. And Mary drew back and said to Joseph, Let us go on. As they turned to go, the innkeeper's wife came to the door. When she saw Mary so tired and pale, she said to her husband, Let them have the stable. They can sleep there tonight if they want to. And Mary said to Joseph, Yes, let us rest there. It will be quiet and warm. So Joseph led Mary to the stable, 
and it was warm and friendly with the friendliness of dumb creatures. The sleepy animals raised their heads to look at their visitors and welcomed them with gentle sounds of greeting. And Joseph took some straw and made a bed for Mary and covered her with his cloak and sat beside her, watching through the night as she slept. Just after midnight, the stable was suddenly filled with a glorious light, and the air was filled with music and the sound of angels singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, reaching to heaven. And Joseph drew back the cloak from Mary, and there beside her lay the baby Jesus. And around his head was a halo of glory, and there was a halo of light round Mary's head too. And Joseph knelt in prayer. Now it so happened that in a field nearby there were some shepherds watching over their flocks when suddenly an angel appeared before them and the glory and light that shone from him dazzled their eyes and they were afraid. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will towards men. When the angels had gone from them into heaven, the oldest shepherd said to the others, let us go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went quickly and found the stable just as the angel had told them. And when they saw Mary and the baby there in the manger, they were filled with wonder. And they went away and told everybody they passed what had happened. And all who heard the news praised God. When the shepherds had gone, Joseph returned to sit by Mary. But there came another knock at the door. When Joseph opened it, there, standing beside their camels, were three travelers. And they said to Joseph, We have come from far, from the east. Where is he who is born the King of Kings? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And they said the star had gone before them, leading them to Bethlehem and the stable where Jesus lay. And when the three wise men saw the baby with Mary his mother, they fell down and worshipped him, paying homage to the Son of God. And they brought gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and placed them on the stable floor before the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus. And in heaven the angels sang triumphantly, Glory to the newborn King. When the three wise men from the east had mounted their camels and were ready to leave, Joseph stood at the door of the stable to bid them farewell, and they pointed to the heavens to show Joseph the star which had led them to Bethlehem. And Joseph opened the stable door wide for Mary to see it too, and it shone down through the open door onto the face of Jesus as he lay in his mother's arms on that first Christmas morning. Oh.